This is the ninth event that the World Academy of Art and Science, World University Consortium are organizing in Dubrovnik. The preface to this was a meeting organized at the UN in Geneva in 2013 on what we called New Paradigm in Human Development. It was a one-day meeting in the Palais de Nation and uh, we had a few hundred diplomats and other uh, academics and NGOs present there where we put forth some issues and opened it for discussion, but it was very clear to us at the end of the day, we created more frustration than we generated knowledge because each of these issues was so important. And since then, we've been conducting these meetings twice a year, taking aspects or dimensions of this greater whole and trying to explore it. It's quite possible that at the end of the three days that frustration will be here also because you say you've taken a little topic, but of course the topic on the table today is as, as huge as humanity uh, and as complex as the, the, the challenges we're facing today, and we realize that. And therefore this event itself is only intended as the first in a series of roundtables that we're going to be conducting uh, I'm hoping to organize some uh, in the near future in North America and in other places. So we're in a process of a dialogue. We are not looking to come out of this meeting with the final solutions to all of the problems plaguing humanity, even in the area of democracy. We're interested in widening our perspective and catching at some insights as to what are the real issues that we should be focusing on. We know in, at the outset that this is the beginning of a discussion rather than uh, trying to come to final policy recommendations which are going to change the world. Our perspective for this and the other events we've been organizing under the new paradigm is that the world is facing unprecedented global challenges today political, economic, social, technological, uh, ecological challenges. And that not only our present policies are inadequate, not only don't we have the institutions that we need in order to address them effectively, but we don't even have the conceptual framework, a clear conceptual framework to handle the unprecedented complexity that we face today. The complexity of the interface between issues, the complexity generated by the speed of change, that it's, it's changing as we, uh, as we speak, uh, and generating enormous uncertainty. And the uncertainty that arises from that complexity generates another uh, feedback as it has its own consequences in people's attitudes, in their decision-making processes. So this is a a moving target and we're on the target and we're moving as we speak and trying to get a clear perspective. The Academy is not essentially a policy making organization. Uh, we are not an institution building organization though we would like to have impact on all of these. We view our primary role is to think and think freshly and creatively and in an integrated way about the issues and to look at the direction of new thinking that's needed. So our motto is leadership and thought that leads to action. And that's what we are asking you to do today and thinking can be hard work, but we hope it will also be very enjoyable. I'm not going to talk much about democracy to get this started, but what I'd like to do is put this discussion in a context. Uh, the context with which we see uh, all the issues have to be reflected uh, that we've been discussing under New Paradigm. It's only about 16, 7, 27, sorry, yeah, 27 years now since the uh, uh, end of the Cold War. And if we think about what's happened to the world since 1990, 1991, uh, it has un undergone change at a rate and a, to an extent 
unparalleled in history. If we think back, we're talking to a time before the Soviet Union broke up, before communism in the East uh, dissolved, before we really broke down the barriers that separated the world into, uh, uh, let's say, incommunicative part portions. And this World Academy, founded in 1960, was established uh, in the middle of the Cold War when the idea of getting people from around the world to discuss any issue was pretty radical because it wasn't easy to do that. It wasn't easy to bring people together. Incidentally, IUC was also founded a little later, 1972, but with the idea of bringing intellectuals, academics from both sides of the Iron Curtain to come together, something that we take as so commonplace today. There, there is no curtain and we don't count sides anymore. We just bring people together. But this is how much the world has changed since then. Uh, and then, of course, we had the WTO founded, the founding of the official founding of the European Union instead of the European Community uh, only after 92. And then, of course, some six years later, the Eurozone. Uh, and then in 94, the World Wide Web, the which has now become really the first global social institution connecting people from around the world instantly in a manner of communication that was inconceivable just 30 years ago. And we went on with all the technological innovations that have happened. We had the East Asian financial crisis, which uh, was a warning of what was to come in 2008. We, had, we saw there was the great liberalization of financial institutions in the 1990s. Uh, uh, where the financial institutions convinced us that unless we liberalize, uh, each country is going to lose out on the great financial markets. And what we created was something like a global casino where an enormous amount of money moved from national level investments to investment in uh, the international financial markets. We had a financialization of economies where more and more of the money no longer goes roughly. We have about $150 trillion in global financial assets, more than that now. Uh, and a, at least 80% of it is now not directed towards the real economy at all. It's circling the globe looking for uh, higher r rates of speculative return. We saw the impact of that in 2008 uh, with when a, a mortgage crisis in the United States. After all, it was only a mortgage crisis spread around the world and generated uh, economic havoc, uh, raising unemployment rates, uh, <coughs> destroying uh, banks, uh, and raising insecurity and instability around the world. And as a result of that, uh, what uh, Piketty and others have highlighted is rates of inequality that we're seeing economic inequality that we haven't seen in most, in, at least in the OECD countries since the 1920s. And I'm sure I have missed, uh, of course, we had the democratization of all of Eastern Europe and of, of Central Asian republics. We've had the independence of so many countries. We've had the move towards democracy. We've had a radical move towards capitalism, towards free markets, or as some refer to it towards neoliberal philosophy that the greater the freedom for we've had the corporations moving out from their domestic hold and homes to become really global being able to shift their headquarters shift their uh, bank accounts and shift their tax uh, obligations to wherever the rates were lowest so a tremendous pressure on sovereign nation states uh, because they no longer had, it's no longer clear who owns what and who really has power and authority over what. And I'm sure I am missing a number of important uh, uh, factors that just come to mind in reflecting on what's been going on. I think all of this is very relevant and important for our discussion today because 
history is in the making, and whatever was true 20, 30, 40 years ago, how far it's relevant today is a question. We have to view everything in a context that the world is changing, its institutions are evolving, our sense of a common humanity, the, the global media, uh, which we have today, uh, which we didn't have 30 years ago, we're all reading much the same news uh, today, or much the same variety of, uh, of news, and much more aware of different perspectives. Of course, the rise of China, and to a second uh, or lesser degree, India, is changing the balance. And I'm not even coming to the recent events, <laughs> like Brexit, where, and then what's happened in North America, uh, uh, where the countries that were leading this whole movement of uh, globalization for such a long period are now espousing philosophies. Wait a minute, <laughs> that's not really the way we, we, it works or it's supposed to work now that everybody else is involved in it and are talking about going in the other direction. So we've got a lot of intellectual confusion uh, we are. Uh, I just came from Ukraine, and uh, uh, we know that we, we've got countries that are radically still embracing uh, a neoliberal philosophy at the same time as our as the home of those philosophies <laughs> is cutting back and saying uh, we want to erect tariff barriers and uh, and other things. So, uh, and then of course we have the migration coming from the Middle East, which has had a just in the last few years, what an enormous impact it's had on Europe and the future of Europe. Three, five years ago, what was the vision of where Europe was going uh, and, how close, and how rapidly it was expanding and now how much the attention is turned inward. And I'm only trying to mention these things uh, so that we realize that we're at a point in time and our perspectives here are colored by uh, the, the particular moment in time where it's not very clear where we've come from, let alone where we're going, because it's changing so quickly. We've, and I think as we discuss, each of us is going to naturally have something in mind. If you've, been, uh, if you've seen a flock of refugees coming into your country, that may be uppermost. Or if you've seen a, a radical change in government or in oligarchy or uh, or in corruption, that may be foremost. Uh, if you come uh, from North America like I do, <laughs> you're questioning everything that you thought was a, a real. Uh, last May we were in South Africa, just at the time when uh, revolutionary revolt, uh, events were unfolding that eventually led to the toppling of uh, uh, a president. Uh, and. Uh, uh, the aware, uh, almost a new terminology uh, of state capture where economic interests capture. So you've each got different rich experience and we benefit from the fact that we have a very diverse group here. We each are looking at it from a different perspective. So when we're talking on the subject of democracy, it's not one <coughs> subject. It's really governance of humanity uh, I just came from India where I spent a lot of time and democracy is one thing, and Pachi also, democracy is one thing there. Uh, so each of us has got something else in mind. I think we will benefit enormously from the multiple perspectives. 